Howdy folks, Colin Lay here. I'm an attorney at Lay Roots, which is a great law firm that focuses exclusively on asset protection. Yesterday, we were talking about land trusts and why we don't recommend them to our clients. So we're here today with part two of that explanation. Before we get started though, if you have questions about setting up your own asset protection plan, please let please visit livemorecarefree.com. You can book a free initial chat with one of our attorneys. Again, that is livemorecarefree.com. So yesterday we were talking about land trust and why we don't recommend them. And the first reason we talked about was that it doesn't really help you avoid the do on sale clause. If you haven't seen that video, we will pop a link to it up there. The next reason we don't recommend them, recommend land trusts is because typically people are looking for asset protection and a land trust does not offer asset protection. There's no protection in it. And many of the promoters that talk about these land trusts do point this out. They'll say, well, there is no asset protection with a land trust. It's just something for privacy. So people don't uh, know who owns the property, they don't know who to get in touch with, that sort of thing. However, hang around a little bit longer, and then they talk about how you can modify the trust and you transfer this beneficial interest to an LLC, and then suddenly this setup provides you with asset protection, but really it, it doesn't provide you with much protection unless you're, the protection you're looking for is just confusing people as to who owns the property, that sort of thing. But there's no real protection to this trust or this setup where you transfer the beneficial interest to an LLC. The reason, I mean, if you ask any attorney if a revocable living trust provides any asset protection, everyone's quick to say, no, 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 no. There's no asset protection with a revocable living trust. A land trust is a revocable living trust. Now, maybe if uh, like an individual, like not an attorney tries to sue you or attorney who doesn't really know very much, um, won't know what to do with this, but any decent attorney is going to know that when they sue you and they try to go after your assets, they can just ask a judge to have you revoke the trust. And the fact that you transfer the beneficial interest to an LLC won't matter. Basically, everything will be undone property will either revert back to you personally, the original owner, or it's going to be put into a trust essentially for your creditors. So I don't know. I mean, if, if there's privacy is your goal, if it's, um, you don't want to spend much on asset protection plan, perhaps going with this strategy will work, but we don't recommend it because they won't hold up to, uh, a serious legal threat. What we recommend people do is instead use other trust laws. I mean, there are plenty of states that offer asset protection trust statutes where you can put a property in a trust and you can remain the beneficiary so that you don't violate your due on sale clause and the trusts actually give you asset protection. There's more protections within that type of trust. And that's typically what we recommend is we, for our clients, we, if they don't wanna or can't put it into an LLC, we will put, we will make individual asset protection trusts for each property, essentially segregating those different assets and providing more protection than you would get with a revocable land trust. So that's the other reason besides Number one was not actually getting around the due on sale clause. And number two is that there is no asset protection with a land trust. So those are the two main reasons that we don't recommend land trusts for our clients. So if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, please take a second to hit that like button. Consider subscribing to our channel up there it's very helpful. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. We appreciate you watching. Take care.